Welcome back to module three. We're in fact uh, on the last snippet within that module, 3.9, the new GNSS signals. But let's start by uh, reviewing GPS, <clears throat> and then we'll move on uh, to the new signals coming from Galileo. And in fact, uh, a fourth new GPS signal, which I, which I don't show here. What I do show here is the spectrum of the GPS satellites which are currently being launched. And so we have, as we've talked about, 1575 with both PY code and CA code. We have L2 at 1227.6 with both P PY code and, and the L2 civil code, which we're happy for. And then down below that, we have L5 at 1176.45 Notice that it has a broader spectrum than either CA or L2 civil. And in fact, it is at 10 megachips per second. So it has the same chipping rate as the military code PY. And the civilian community is extremely grateful for this because it means that their performance when they have a jammer or radio frequency interference present in the channel will be much better than it was for either CA or L2 civil. Remember we talked about how the despreading operation of the GPS receiver attenuates the influence of that radio frequency interference, so the civilians are eager for that too. It also has more signal power, and um, uh, we won't go into these details, but it also has a so-called data-free component. And that means that the navigation data doesn't modulate all of the signal coming at L5. And that helps the receiver and it helps the receiver, in fact, attain better performance once again if there's strong noise pre present or radio frequency interference present. So this is almost the entire GPS picture. We're going to come back to it in a little while and add some things that are very, very current. The overall situation in terms of the international development of satellite navigation is shown here. And the three signals here, L1, L2, and L5, are shown here, here, and here. So in the scheme of things, GPS is only one player in an increasingly complicated satellite navigation world. There is definitely a Russian signal, GLONASS L1, GLONASS, sorry, G2, GLONASS G5, which is always immediately above the GPS signals. GLONASS constellation is very strong. They have some 24 satellites on orbit here in the middle of 2014. Here come the Europeans. <coughs> and they have a signal uh, in the same band as GPS L1, they call it Galileo E1. Galileo E5 spans both GPS L5 and GLONASS L5. And then there's a new frequency that they're using up here in the higher part of the band between 1200 and 1300 called Galileo E6. And then the Chinese are here with Beidou B1, Beidou B5, Beidou B6, with the alignments that you see there. Now, you may ask if we were to drill in and look at one of these chunks of spectrum more closely, would it look like this? With sine x over x of different widths superposed on top of each other? And the answer is no. Something new has happened. The new spectra, and this might be a good one for looking at GPS L1, looks more like this. Notice that sine x over x is still there, certainly, for CA code. 
no one would quickly or casually remove a signal which shows up in billions of GPS receivers today. But there's a fourth signal coming from GPS, and wh whereas this one is called L1CA, the new one is called L1C. And it doesn't have sine x over x. It doesn't look that dissimilar. Certainly it's got all kinds of side lobes, but notice that it has two main peaks there and there rather than the single peak. And the reason for that is if you look closely at L1CA, the code chips are these simple rectangles going like this. But if you take a look at what's true for the new L1C, each time we have a chip, we in fact have a doublet for the L1C, and here we would have a doublet in the opposite direction. So we have taken the individual chips and split them. And that splitting gives rise to this split spectrum. And there are two advantages of that. One is that now the new signals and the old signals aren't directly on top of each other in terms of the frequency domain. So that, they, that means that they can coexist more readily even if there are imbalances in their power. In other words, rather than re relying on the cross-correlation properties of the codes alone, we're going to rely on the cross-correlation properties of the codes plus the fact that the signals are not directly on top of each other. And the other advantage of chip, uh, splitting the chips like this is that the autocorrelation function becomes more peaked. That central peak that we've looked at many times is now sharper. And that means we can more readily distinguish between a ray that comes to us directly as opposed to one that arrives a little bit late due to the fact that it has reflected off a building or the ground. Now you may ask, why did you just move the spectrum out a little bit? Why didn't you move it out a lot? And in fact, that is what's done for the new military signals. So up here at the top, we have these peaceful CA code chips. Each one of them is one microsecond long. And then down here for these signals, we can take each one of those chips and split it into, let's say, 10 pieces. I don't know if I got exactly 10 there, but uh, hopefully you're uh, uh, following what I'm trying to do. <clears throat> and that moves the spectrum even further out. Now this has a military advantage in that if you're in a battle, you can jam the center of the band and hope that that has a negative effect on your enemy because perhaps they're relying on civilian receivers and then just go ahead and receive these uh, signals that are separated not only by virtue of code but also by virtue of their location in the spectrum. So just to renew, uh, refresh or review this business about uh, the new, new signals, they're called binary offset carriers because if you take a look at the frequency of this underlying chip splitting, and in this case the chip splitting is by a factor of four, and what I showed you earlier was chip splitting by either a factor of two or ten, so this is an intermediate example, but if you look at that chip splitting factor, it's the one that tells you how much farther out in frequency the main lobes of the new signals will reside. So today, if you looked closely at the spectrum 
of the newly launched GNSS satellites, now inclusive of Beidou, Europe, Russia, US, you would find that when you drill down close to L1, L2, L5, E5, uh, E6, whatever, you'd have a mixture of sine X over X spectra and these binary offset carrier spectra. Both kinds of signals are in use. Thank you for your attention.